welcome to Prime Time Conversations. Here's your host, James Tunstall. Hey, everyone, welcome to the show. Today, very special guest, one of my favorite artists from punk rock music, uh, singer of many songs like all the, uh, the girl, bad guys want, 1985. Alexis Bliss from a couple of years uh, from last year, so uh, one and only Mr. Jarrett Reddick from Bowling for Soup. Jarrett, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you doing, man? Good, thanks. Uh, a little bit cold over here. It's uh, we're finally hitting our winter time. We don't really get snow uh, down south of England, but it does get pretty cold. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's uh, fairly interesting weather here. It's it's uh, where I live. It either is just so cold you can't stand it or so hot you can't stand it and there's kind of like a not not a lot in between but uh it's been a fairly easy winter on us yep. where you uh live in uh, california i'm in texas actually all right texas yeah born and raised in texas and bowling for soup you know during the um i mean during you know when the when we were having hits and stuff I, a conversation would sort of come up every once in a while, whether we should move to LA or go to New York or whatever. But um, yeah, it just, it just made sense to stay here. This is our home. Awesome. Uh, yeah. I've actually spoken to quite a few people from Texas. The, the three main areas I seem to speak to people from is rather Texas, California, Florida. That's the three main places in America. Well, I mean, it, honestly, those are, well, that's, that makes sense. I mean, th- those, those three and then New York are, are the most populated places. So, yeah. You know, it only, uh, that would, and all, all three of those are all football states, too. That's interesting. Amer- American football states. It's interesting. Mm. Uh, cool. uh, so first we want to talk about is your podcast. I've actually been checking out quite a lot of uh, Jarrett Goes to the Movies and uh, really enjoyed your uh, basketball uh, review because that's, oh, that's one of my favorite comedy films. I think it's just a masterpiece. Uh, what made you start uh, reviewing movies and uh, obviously your other podcasts? Yeah, so, I mean, so I started podcasting, I guess, back in 2009, and, uh, you know, everybody kept telling me, not everybody, but my managers had a guy that was doing, um, you know, what what social media was back then. I mean, it, it really, you know, nothing like what it is now, and I remember him saying, you know, you got to do this thing where it's a podcast, and so, I, you know, I did it and, and I quickly, you know, it was pretty successful, but I just didn't have, I just didn't commit the time to keep it going. I think had I, you know, of course nobody ever knows. Right. But had I had any idea what podcasts would be now, um, I had a pretty amazing start and, and probably would have, uh, would, you know, would have definitely been on the forefront of all of it, but yeah. You know, I was just basically just getting on there and talking to my friends and, and, uh, you know, I'd play songs and I'd talk about what's going on in Bowling for Soup. And yeah, I just didn't really have any direction. Well, I, uh, I met a guy named Rich and, uh, he's a big podcast guy and he's just like, man, you need to have a podcast. I'm like, well, I've got one. And, you know, of course that I guess I'd done probably, uh, you know, 20 or 30 episodes over the course of 10 years at the time. I couldn't be that long. Anyway, uh, over a long time. And he's like, no, no, no. Like one where you do something and you put it out every week and, and you just riff on stuff, you know. And I'm mm. just like, yeah, OK, whatever. And and long story short, he came up with the idea, actually. He was like, man, you should do a movie review thing because you love mu- movies. You talk about it in your songs. And, and you know, that was uh, – we're about to do our 300th episode of Jarrett Goes to the Movies, actually. And, oh, um, you know, and then that 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 show is completely – crowdfunded uh we have a patreon that that pays all of the cast my wife and i don't take any money from it it's just something that we love to do and yeah um and then uh about three years ago me and gary uh from bowling for soup were in his mom's swimming pool and uh, we were just talking about our kids and being dads and i was like dude this is a show you know like this is a podcast and so we started the Rockstar dad show and yeah. uh, quickly got on Adobe Radio, which is an internet radio station, and that show is has sponsors and stuff like that. So, um, and then I still do the BFS fan page rampage, which is basically what is left of my old podcast. Um, as just it's just all things bowling for soup, and 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 again, it's still very sporadic. We go six eight months without doing an episode, but the other two, 
you get one every week. And then, um, you know, I've got another one coming out uh, called Jarrett and Daniel versus the world, which is a guy from the UK and then me just comparing things like fast food or, you know, yeah. just and, and it's mostly mostly just us taking the piss out of each other. Yeah. And, uh, you know, all good hearted fun. And, uh, you know, possibly another one. It's, you know, it's just, it's one of those things where it's it's kind of, to me, it's almost as addicting as, as playing shows because it's just a great outlet to be able to make people laugh. It is. Um, I've got uh, this uh, channel actually started off as a wrestling channel. And uh, we used to review uh, wrestling uh, events, pay-per-views from the 90s. That quickly became into a wrestling interview show, which often viewed many great names. I've been so lucky to do so, but now I've changed it to branch into talking people from all pop culture, music, movie, and TV, and mm -hmm. I'm enjoying it. But I do also have a wrestling channel with a former wrestler, Rene Dupree, which I do every week as well, and we speak to other wrestlers. So, and like you said, once you start one podcast, you start to get a bit of a rush of doing it, and you <laughs> yeah. just want to keep doing more and more, but it's getting the time to do it, and it's impossible sure. to make up yeah. all of it. Very time consuming. I mean, at first we were doing all of the editing ourselves, and now I'm lucky. I've got Sean who edits both, well, all of the podcasts actually, and um, you know he he does that, and and you know it's that the, it's very very time consuming. But also, you know, just uh, you know, if you, it, it, with a movie podcast, you have to watch the movie, you know, and you've got to yes. take notes, and you've got to be ready to 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 get through it, but. You know, again, at, for Jared Goes the Movies, it's uh, it's awesome because my wife is also on the show. And uh, so that's something that we can do together, watch the movie during the week and be ready for the show. And then we're doing the show together. And then um, Gary and I, you know, basically love hanging out no matter what anyway. So so that 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 one's pretty easy. Awesome. Uh, so I noticed growing up, you was a. Uh... You've done plenty of karate, and I've got to ask because it's the hot thing about uh, right now. Uh, Cobra Kai. I'm guessing you're a fan. So I uh, have not watched it. Um, what? I love the Karate Kid, uh, and uh, you know, loved that growing up. And my son does karate, and that. But no, I have not seen Cobra Kai. It, it's one of those things where I don't watch a ton of television. Right. And that television that I watch, I'll watch watch one show at a time or something because my yeah, wife will watch it with me and we'll kind of get through that and then I'll do another one. But I am um, – I'm a very – I feel guilty for doing really anything that isn't uh, creative or, you know, whatever. And, and, and not that I don't think – I would rather be a TV watcher, but hmm. my hobbies are – writing songs and doing podcasts and, you know, making people laugh and all of that. So it's like, I just always find myself, you know, wanting to get back in the studio and do that. So, you know, but, you know, we watch, we watch Yellowstone, we watch Peaky Blinders. Um, I think Peaky Blinders is maybe one of the best shows ever. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, of, of course, Ted Lasso. Uh, so, you know, I'm, uh, I'm up on a lot of them, but I've never seen a lot of things like, um, you know, I've never seen Breaking Bad and I've never seen Cobra Kai and, you know, so for some, but for it, it actually works out OK, because that's a really good conversation. If I'm like, I've never seen Breaking Bad and people are like, what? You know, and so it ends up <laughs> I'm rewatching now at the minute. <laughs> yeah. Are you? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I hear it's great. Everybody says it's the best show of all time. I don't know how you beat Game of Thrones, but, uh, you know, who knows? Okay. Game of Thrones would have been the best show of all time. It wasn't for the final season. <laughs> yeah, you didn't like the final season. Yeah, well, they had to wrap it up somehow. And uh, they done my they done my boy Jon Snow so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't I don't disagree, but you know he's got he had all the in, inner uh, all the inner beasts. Yeah. Well, uh, one day uh, uh, George R. Martin will finish the books, but I highly doubt it. <laughs> so right. um, yeah. Well, well, We'll have to see. Uh, cool. So I suppose we'll get into the uh, origins of the band. So uh, Bowling for Soup. So how did it first come about? Um, you know, uh, some dudes in a small town here in Texas. Uh, Chris Burney, our guitar player, ran a little coffee shop that had bands. And mm. uh, myself and our original drummer, Lance, who was my best friend since I was three years old, uh, we had we had a band before that 
uh, called Cool Fork, and we were kind of like the first punk, first punk band in Wichita Falls, Texas. And our band broke up, and Chris and Eric were in a band together, and their band broke up, and so we literally just kind of joined forces, and we did some of their songs and some of our songs, but we made their songs punk rock. And really, it was just something to do. Uh, it kept us out of trouble. But things moved really fast. I mean, we we got together. We had a we had our first show within a month, um, and then we were recording an album within three months. That album was out within six months, you know. And then uh, it, it just it kept going. That was in '94, you know. By '96, we had another two albums out, and then uh, two more before we signed in uh, 1999 uh, with Jive. And then, you know, again, still in the van and. And driving around and playing to nobody till 2003, and then the girl the bad guys want hit, and you know it was, uh, you know that's obviously when our love affair. Well, actually, before then, the UK uh, and us during the bitch song, our love yeah. affair, our love affair began with uh, with your great country over there, and um, you know that's where we're at today. Yeah, uh, the bitch song uh, it was popular over here, and uh, yeah. you mentioned good relationship with the UK. Yeah. Uh, Imagine you got a few fun stories traveling over here. <laughs> we have some good stories, yeah. I mean, we you know we've seen a lot of stuff. <clears throat> you know, we um, it's uh, I, I'll you know I'll never forget our first tour over there. We were uh, we were playing pool, and yeah. you know, for us it, it was super interesting because you know everything's a little bit different in each country, and so like our pool tables are different like the the holes are bigger and the balls are yeah. all a different color and yeah. you know it's it's <laughs> it's a different game as well i guess um and so you know we were trying to figure that out and <laughs> i'll never forget this like this and you know i was probably well gosh i guess that was 2000 so i was probably like 28 years old 28 29 and this uh, really young girl came up to us and she was like uh, are, are you guys bowling for soup and we're like uh yeah she's like hey um, do you want us to take you around back and give you a blow job and we were like fucking what <laughs> like what are you what <laughs> and you know it was it was very you know culturally like learning about you know the differences in sort of like how how shagging isn't taboo over there and what you know, that kids, kids over there, you know, they're drinking beers at 18 and, you know, here that's, it's 21. And so just the differences in the culture. Uh, but really the big thing for us is just how much music is a part of everyday life over there. You know, mm -hmm. um, how families, uh, so sorry, so sorry, you got to get some oxygen. Uh, families, you know, vacation together by going to Download Festival or, you know, Reading or whatever, and uh, families going to shows together. And, you know, sometimes we'll have, you know, someone who started out bringing their kids to our shows, and now they're bringing their grandkids to the shows. And, you know, it's it's uh, it's just amazing. I, I One of the other things I found so, uh, and, and, you know, it's it's leveled out here a little bit, but when we started our band, uh, music was very uh, clicky over here. So if you liked pop punk, then that's what you liked. If you liked heavy metal, yep. that's what you liked. But so really, you sort of might kind of bend the lines a little bit, maybe kind of get over in this lane a smidge. But really, you kind of stuck to that because that's what your friends listen to. And you know, I, I never forget starting to get mail from over in the UK to be like, my favorite bands are Rage Against the Machine and Bowling for Soup, and you'd be like what you know how does that even think how is that a thing but you know i think that's the way the world is now and uh, i feel like you guys are always way ahead as far as um just being music fans and uh how to how to throw the a, a festival right and all of that but uh yeah a definite love affair we definitely have had had a lot of fun over there we got to our first fist fight um in the, well awesome. our second fist awesome. fight ever over there in southampton Oh yeah, and uh, you know, I like to think we won. And, How's that? Um, <laughs> yeah, so you know, it's uh, it's definitely been an ongoing relationship that we that we hold very dear. Awesome, and uh, yeah, you mentioned earlier uh, all the girls, the bad guys, want um, just super massive song. As you was uh, 
writing the song? Did you realize how big of a hit it would actually be? No, and I am on record as saying this. I can't hear a hit. Uh, no. I think they all are great, you know, and I, I, if I were to pick the song on that record that I thought was going to be the hit, I thought it was going to be Emily. I just thought Emily was going to be this huge monster hit. Uh, you know, again, it just shows that I don't know anything. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, I, I, but, but, you know, everybody that we would play it for would just go, oh, you know, like, this is a game changer. And be like, really? You know, and uh, so, you know, um, I, I guess you just really can't ever predict, you know, and then you, then, then I'll have songs that I'm like, absolutely positive are going to be huge and, and, uh, and they don't do as well. So. I, uh, I I just don't have that ability. I guess they're all just way too near and dear to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have to ask, like, the song is, what, is about 20 years old now, nearly? Um, uh, yeah, al- al- almost. Yeah, almost. Yeah. And 20 years later, I don't know what it is, but what is a two-way? It's a pager. It's a, uh, like, right. um, yeah, so you used to... Yeah. Say, and... and it's also a reference to the the point of it. A point of that lyric is because a two way is a pager, but it's also a dildo. But right. you know, obviously, <laughs> the poor girl can't wear a dildo around. So you know, you kind of put that in there. But that lyric, for some reason, nobody gets that right off. You know, it's always just like, oh. what is it? Some kind of sexual thing? Like, what is it? But it's a, I mean, it's a pager. Right, because I was, uh, funny enough, I was, wa- I was watching this song again the other day on YouTube, and I'm going through the comments, and that was the top comment every time, what is a two-way? And people was like, is it some sort of a top? Is it like a bong? Is it a cheese thing? Right, no one knew. yeah. <laughs> yep, absolutely. But, um, no, it was a great song, and uh, the video was just as great as well. How much fun did you have filming the video? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, that one actually was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a lot of work. Um, you know, the, the makeup, I think took four or five hours. They actually had a guy that off the set of Star Trek came oh, and well. put that bald wig on me and painted the beard and the tattoos and all of that. So, uh, it was legit looking, but yeah, it was super fun. It was, um, you know, you, you, when you're doing a spoof video like that, you, you just, you want it to be so over the top that, it's silly and it doesn't feel like you're just making fun of people, you know, otherwise you get the shit kicked out of you. So, um, you know, I think we did a good job at that. Yeah. A few of the acts you uh, spoofed, obviously Slipknot and Limbiscuit comes to mind. Uh, what was the feedback from these bands when they saw the video? Well, Slipknot, we actually make the heroes because they come out and, uh, beat up Fred Durst at the time. That's but, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Fred Durst apparently is not a big fan. Um, uh, and uh, Stained, I actually saw that guy uh, at Reading and Leeds, I believe, 2004. And uh, we we had a nice conversation, and he just, he basically just told me he was like, you know, to be honest, it kind of hurt my feelings. I'm a you know I'm a I'm a real songwriter, and I said he goes, I just don't really understand why us. And I just said because you're the face of that genre, like you're the dude that like, and everybody picked pictures the bands that are mad at their dads you know you're who they see you know you are you just have that look about you and uh and i was like so honestly i in some way i feel like we're more paying tribute and he was like you know i kind of get it and and so we uh we hugged and took a photo there's actually that photo is on my instagram not too long back if anybody wants to see it you can just go to my instagram and check it out because it's i just posted it recently um, but yeah, it's both of us a lot younger, you know, but, uh, but yeah, he, he, he's a, he's a great guy. He lives in Texas now. He's a country artist and, uh, oh, cool. and I guess Stained is, is back active again and doing really well. Nice. And, uh, around this time, obviously I would imagine it's something I've never had the opportunity to go to. I've always wished I could, uh, the Vans, uh, Warp Tours. So I would imagine mm. you had quite a bit of fun on them. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's like summer camp, you know, it's, uh, it's something that I miss. I miss the camaraderie. I don't, I don't miss the heat. Um, it's a lot of work for our crew. It's a, it's a grueling tour, Hmm. but 
you know, being out on the road with 60 other bands and, you know, you're friends with all of them and everybody in it together and, and helping one another when, you know, somebody needs something or somebody isn't feeling good or, you know, and then just, you know, because after the show's, the show's over at, you know, eight or nine each night, you usually don't roll until four or five in the morning. And so, you know, you set up little camps and everybody hangs out and, you know, cook food and, you know, have some beers. And that's the aspect of it that I miss the most. You know, it was funny because when we did that final warp tour, uh, the final, final cross country one, I just remember like sitting out there by the bus and just, and I actually said the words, I was like, this might be the last time we ever do this. And everybody knew what I meant. I didn't mean the last time we'll sit outside our bus and, you know, be in lawn chairs and drink some beers and, and have a good time just, but you know, with 60 bands of like-minded and, you know, people who do the same thing we do, you know? And uh, a lot of those, a lot of those guys you got used to seeing every year, uh, you know, crew guys or whatever, and you, it, good chance we won't ever see them again. So it was very, uh, it's almost like graduating from high school. You know, I, I know school works differently over there, but you know, yeah, here you go, to, you go to school with the same people for 13 years and then you sort of graduate and then everybody goes in their different directions and you really don't see most of them ever again. You know, Facebook's no. kind of fixed that a smidge, but uh, still it's, uh, it, it's, it was very weird walking away that last year. I uh, mentioned off camera, I spoke to uh, Cohen from Sum 41, and uh, mm. they had the reputation of being pretty big uh, partiers, but during your time on the tours, I suppose, who would you say was the biggest partiers, or was it yourselves? Yeah, I mean, for sure, if you're talking, uh, if you're talking alcohol, uh, if you're getting into other things, um, you know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't even qualify because that's not us but uh yeah i think we're up there i mean uh you know we toured with some 41 we did work for they're, they're definitely big partiers as well um they're they're kind of like little little brother years like they like they back in the day they like to do pranks and stuff you know we weren't really yeah. ever pranksters as much as we were just you know fuck shit up and you know uh, most of the time not to hurt anybody, you know, most of the time just to hurt ourselves. Not that they did. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying they were really big into, you know, pulling pranks and stuff like that. Our, our shit was like, you know, can you push me in this shopping cart? Or as you guys would say, a trolley. Can you put me in that trolley and push me down this hill? You know, jackass shit, you know. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, they're, they're big partiers to uh, – actually, man, I, I'll be honest. There's, I don't know if you guys got boys like girls over there. Uh, but that band, oh, could, could that it, yeah. band could party. And I'll tell you the other one. I'll tell you a scary party band is uh, Sponge from over right. there. Those fuckers would get up in the morning and get a beer out of the out of the bus, out of the boot of the bus, and just start drinking right when they woke up. And it was warm and gross. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, those dudes could those could, those guys knew how to throw down too. Awesome, cool, and. Uh... What your next big year, I, I would say 1985, uh, another spoof video, uh, which I've always enjoyed, but uh, such a great song. But uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> a lot of uh, tributes you could say you've done on that video. A lot of tributes. Um, you know, uh, we definitely had fun doing that. You know, we cut, we rented the whole street, and um, oh, wow. you know, it was uh, it was fun. That one was was a little harder because. Um, I had to do a bunch of stuff by myself and I, I missed the other guys and then they were like drinking in the trailer and shit and I'm having to do all the work, but, uh, you know, it's fine. That that's what you get for being the best looking one. You know, that's what happens. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was a super fun video and, uh, the mom was really, really hot. Um, good times. Who was she? Her name's Joey house. She's a, a producer, still director, uh, still in the, in the business, but uh, yeah, we we picked her because she looked like Tony Tony Gatain, uh, yes. who was the, was the actual girl who danced on White Snake's car. Right, that was uh, great lyrics, and uh, <laughs> when you said dressed up as uh, Robert Palmer and the rest of the band, mm. <laughs> the girls. I just yeah, a couple of stories from that thing. Um, if you if you go and you watch the part where we're being hip hop kids, 
Yeah. Uh, you'll see Eric do the centipede. Well, when he does that, he actually hits his chin on the on wow. the floor and busts his chin wide open. So we had to use that take. But before that, we were doing the Robert Palmer thing, and Chris uh, was in the high heels that they were supposed to be in, and he twisted his ankle. And uh, I was just like, well, take the shoes off. That's it. You know, we're not doing that anymore. And the the directors were like, hey, we need to get them back in the shoes. And I'm like, you need to change your shot because they're not putting those shoes back on. You know, I, uh, I'm, I'm a really, really, really nice guy. Most people will tell you I'm the nicest guy they've ever met. But if you fuck with my guys, I, I, yeah. I just, I'm not the nicest guy in the world. And I, I was, uh, you know, he hurt himself. And I'm just like, that's it. We're done. But. So some of those were their close up close ups. Those might have been a little bit wider shots and uh, showing them a little bit more in the shoes and stuff. But I I handled that. <laughs> so it, and uh, yeah, these albums you were putting out was just hit after hit, so and so many. And I mean, one of the biggest hits you've done, High School Never Ends, which to yeah. me it's a timeless song because it still yeah. reflects society these days. Mm-hmm. Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, Jared, you wrote this with. Adam, I apologize, apologize if I pronounce his surname wrong, uh, Schlesinger. And, yes, uh, Schle- Schlesinger, yes. Schlesinger. Uh, sadly, he passed away. I think it was due to COVID. Um, well, he was such a great songwriter and wrote so many songs and for movies as well, like The, mm-hmm. the Wonders, which is one of my favorite movies. Uh, how was he? And obviously, I would imagine you just were really sad when he passed away. Yeah, it was brutal. Um, that's like one of the first... Well, it's the first person I knew that passed away from COVID and like one of the only, uh, you know, artists that I know. Um, yeah, it, it, it sucked. Adam was a really great guy. We wrote together quite a bit. Um, you know, he was really funny, pretty nerdy, um, but so talented and just so mm-hmm. musical. And, you know, I, I, as you said, the wonders, um, that thing you do, just such a great yeah. song. And, you know, uh, throughout all of the movies and TV shows that he wrote for, then the Fountains of Wayne stuff. And even he was in a band with Taylor Hansen and James E. Hawk called Tinted Windows. And those songs That's right, were yeah. great. Um, so, yeah, just a, a huge loss. But, yeah, that one, um, that hurt, man. I, I, uh, it, the way that I described it was it was when it became real, you know, I, I, Things, things in life are kind of like that, you know, really, most of the time it just feels like you're watching a television show, right? Like when you're watching, yeah. you know, horrible things happen, you know, you're watching bombs go off in cities or, you know, and honestly, you know, even in my own country, you know, when the, when September 11th happened, uh, again, it, it doesn't feel real because you're not there, you're not experiencing it. Yeah. And so this COVID thing. Again, you, you take the precautions, you're sad about things and, you know, you still have these emotions, but it still doesn't register in your brain the same until it, it actually impacts you. And so uh, Adam, was, it was just, it was so random and so close. And I just, I, I cried for a long time. I would, you know, cause I was like, this is too, that's too close now. Like I, I, this is, it's too close. This is real. You know, yeah. not, really not that, again, not that I didn't think it was real, but that's the way it works. Right? You, you know, most people with things like that, again, like I said, I, I, I might've already made my point. It's, you just sort of go through your life and it doesn't affect your life in such a way to where until it does. And then you're like, shit, <laughs> you know, like, this is this is horrible, and so I feel bad. I mean, he had two daughter, he had two daughters, and um, you know, uh, still just such a huge career ahead of him. You know, yeah. So it, who knows what he would have done? Because I, I think he, you know, he'd already done a bunch of stuff for Broadway and stuff. And I, I'm certain that he would have written some kind of crazy musical that would have absolutely just blown us all away. Yeah, um, Stacy's mom's one of my favorite songs, a timeless song, and. Obviously yeah, the video was not, not only, I mean, great song and but and such a funny thing because it's can almost see him writing that as being this sort of like dumbed down joke of going like I'm gonna write this song and it's gonna be so catchy. I'm just gonna write this song about you know liking some chick's mom, 
you know, because his his other lyrics are just so smart, you know. Yeah. Um, and you know what? He did never say that to me. He did never say, "Hey, I I done this down." But you know, we all kind of do that every once in a while. You go like, "I want to write a song that every single person in the world can understand what the hell I'm saying," and he definitely did that. Yeah. And uh, obviously, like we mentioned, he wrote "High School Never Ends With You," and uh, yeah. Another big hit. Uh, like every yeah. album seemed to be producing all these big hits, and that's like I said, the song is timeless because <laughs> it reflects so much of society. And what's crazy about that song is is that uh, he we we went into that session, and he he was all about writing a song about tabloids. He wanted to write about tabloids, right? And I had had high school never ends that line written in my my songbook. And in my phone and all that for, I mean, years, years and years and years. And I'm so, I, I still think back to this going, how did nobody else ever write that? Because I had it for so long, you know. And again, I, that's, I think that's sort of what makes music so special is like, it, it is like, like inventions, you know, like I should have thought of that, you know, why didn't, or, you know, when we see comedians, right? We're like, Jesus Christ, I, I think about that all the time, but I did it. I don't know how to put it into a joke, you know. Um, people felt the fact that high school never ends. They just didn't really put it into words. And so I, I had that. And we combined the two ideas and uh, and basically made high school never ends. And, uh, yeah, came out great. That song started out, though, there's a mix that didn't make the album and I've always I, I really should actually leak that out there somehow. But uh, our first version of it was leak real, my channel if you want. <laughs> it, it was real, real, real poppy, like almost radio, like uh, I mean, like Jonas Brothers, -y, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, we, we kind of had to reel that back in and make it more guitar driven and stuff. And and uh, but it worked. It was um, not as big of a hit as we wanted it to be in the USA, but huge worldwide and, and now streaming wise, it's, it's our second biggest song. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, I've noticed that and it's, it's, it happens over here for UK as well. It's like, for example, Billy Idol, he's popular over here, but he's a megastar over in the States. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's, um, he's, uh, he's royalty here. Like he, yeah. that, that would be like, yeah, he's he's just kind of that cool, cooler than cool. But it's like, you know, but that's the thing, too, right? Um, you got like that band busted toured over here in a van and over there they yeah. were doing, you know, multiple nights in arenas, you know, so that's right. you just, um, you know, you never know. Luckily, I mean, it's kind of caught up. I mean, our, our we're, we're as popular here as we are in the UK. Uh it's just a more spread out country. So it's easier to do yeah. bigger shows there because, mm -hmm. you know, things are a little bit more dense in certain areas. So whereas we do more shows here to less people, but end up playing to the same amount of people, basically, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's something I spoke to uh, with Cone about because um, I've always been, like you mentioned earlier, like uh, – the UK especially, we seem to have a wide range of music I like, uh, we like. Uh, for example, I can listen to Slipknot one second, then the next track I'm playing the Four Seasons, for example. Sure. Um, sure. You know, that's how it makes is. But as I was talking to Cohen, and I love pop punk, uh, it's one of my favourite genres of music, but it seems not to get the respect it deserves, and... Cone spoke about it when they was recording Screaming Bloody Murder, how the studio, um, the record label, sorry, f uh, felt like they was just a step ahead of Reg because they was more interested in just pop and rap in these days. Do you kind of agree with that fact? Pop punk, uh, pop punk doesn't sit, uh, punk rock, sorry, doesn't seem to get the respect as other genres of music. Yeah, I mean, I think it depends, I just think it depends on, you know, where you're coming from. You know, it's funny. Uh, I've been reading this book about, you know, some of the early punk rock bands and, and the early hardcore bands and stuff. And uh, just sort of like what they're what they were thinking, and what their ideas were. And really, it was all about acceptance, really. You know, it was it was about, you know, you essentially you doing what you want. So if you're doing what you want, despite what everybody else thinks or whatever, then that's punk. 
right? Mm. That that's pretty much the bottom line. Um, so really, the the argument that is is just whether pop punk is punk, and and to me, I, I just don't care. I mean, I, I would venture to say that it is because the reason we all started doing it is because we were listening to punk bands, you know, and we just happened to like melody and we put harmonies in songs and those things. And, and, you know, it wasn't, I guarantee you, you know, Derek Wembley, myself, you know, all of these guys, newfound glory, we didn't go, we're going to be on the radio. Like I, you, I, you could have never convinced me that we were going to be on the radio and especially on pop radio that just happened because the, the songs got popular. That sound got popular. Um, so I don't know. Look, I look at it like this. I think pop punk is its own thing. Uh, yeah. I think just like hair metal, just like hardcore, as I said earlier, I think just like 80s hip hop, 90s grunge, uh, 90s hip hop, pop punk is this thing. It exists. There's definitely a heyday. But right now we've got this insane resurgence in it. It's yeah. very, very popular again. It's talked about all the time. And I think it'll do that forever. I, just like, again, just like hair metal does, just like hardcore does, like all of this stuff, everything just kind of, there'll be another generation of kids in eight years that get back into it again. And all of a sudden, you know, some 41 and Bowling for Soup and, and you know, as I said, New Fun Glory, whoever, Good Charlotte, you know, are going to be back up in the streaming numbers and, and, uh, and, you know, sort of just popping up everywhere again for whatever reason. But, uh, you know, I would actually say that I bet you there's probably not many people in any genre of music that feel like they get the respect they deserve. If that makes yeah. sense. Like, like, I don't think that you, you, I don't think you would go up to like a pop band. Cause you know, <laughs> think about it like this. It's like, uh, that band five seconds of summer right like they, they want to be looked at as a as a band as like a pop punk band but the, the truth is is we all see them as a boy band yeah so to them they don't get the respect that they deserve but they each have 20 million dollars in the bank you know yeah <laughs> so really at the end of the day who gives a shit you yeah. know and and you know so you know i don't know i think uh i think at the end at the end of the day i just said that twice sorry but i think you know Grand scheme of things, most things don't get don't feel like they get the respect that they deserve, you know. And I'm fine with the respect that we get, you know. I, I think we we toughed it out. We we really didn't get accepted into anything. I mean, even pop punk kind of, you know, those bands were cooler than us because we didn't know anybody, you know, that we weren't from Texas and we didn't get on those tours or on those labels or any of that shit. We got signed to a pop label. So it took going out there and playing next to them at Warp Tour at festivals or whatever and getting to know them and them going, oh, shit, this is legit. And it took 27 years of still being popular and delivering when we put out new shit and delivering when we play live and, and all that. Awesome. And uh, something I only found out a couple of years ago, and I've heard of Phineas and Ferb for ages, but I'd never mm. watched it. But my kids were watching it, and obviously the opening track comes on. I'm, and I'm like, that, that band sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. I'm I, like, it's not probably the same. So I'm looking on my phone, and I'm like, fucking hell, it is. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, us. Imagine how many people hear that song now. <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of mind-boggling, actually. You know, I um, I joke a lot about, like, how famous I am. That's kind of one of these little bits that I do all the time where I'm just, I tell my friends, I'll just be like, well, I can't do that. I'm famous, you know. Um, yeah. And obviously I'm being facetious, but if you just there, there, I have seen numbers like from publicists and stuff as to like between Phineas and Ferb and Jimmy Neutron, uh, those things. And then if you put in Chuck E. Cheese and then you do all the Bowling for Soup stuff and those like how many people hear my voice a day, you know, yeah. it's fucking mind boggling. Like it's <laughs> unbelievable how, how many people hear you know, me talking or singing or whatever every single day. Um, so, yeah, man, it's it's cool. It feels good. It's it's one of those things where Phineas and Ferb became the thing where, um, you know, after like 2009, we didn't really have songs on the radio anymore, you know. So and and not everybody listens to our kind of music. So, you know, peop, I'd meet like my kids, parent, my kids, friends, parents or whatever. And they'd be like, what do you do? I'm, I'm a musician. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and there was literally at a point where I wouldn't even say Bowling for Super 1985 anymore. I'd be like, yeah, we do the Phineas and Ferb thing because they would all go, what? You know, like, yeah. all right, that just that goes ahead and I'll stop judging you because you've got funny hair and tattoos now. I'll uh, I'll let you into this conversation and perhaps you'd like a biscuit, you know, that kind of thing. Cool. And uh, I think it was last year, no, it was the year before, uh, you got a lot of attention. I'm a wrestling fan. As I mentioned, this channel is a wrestling channel. And uh, the song Alexa Bliss, I would imagine you're wrestling fans. So I, uh, Chris and I were, were wrestling fans back in the 80s. Um, yeah. I grew up watching, um, well, both of us grew up uh, watching the Von Erics and the Freebirds. Um, oh, yeah, world class. At, World class championship wrestling, yeah, of course you know, and um, you know, and then we got some of the other ones. We got like the San Antonio wrestling, and we've got the Atlanta one, which was like Sergeant Slaughter, the beginning of that Dunn Rhodes that stuff. And then the WWF came, and that was you know Hulk Hogan. So we we were exposed to all of that, but we were really into world class championship wrestling. And um, but then you know we sort of aged out of it, and then uh, WWE kind of took over everything and continued to grow really not my thing but my son um who's 15 now mm. several years ago just started getting into it and he was just like man i love this whatever and so i took him to a match and uh yeah um uh alexa bliss came out uh and you know there's her name and there's all of the stuff what nothing there's one of those there's an alexa over there and every time i say it uh, she lights up and starts to talk or whatever. Right. And uh, I did the vocal here in the house. And while I was singing the song, you know, for an entire day. And every single time, it, my wife was just like, they're going off all over the house. We've got to get out of here. <laughs> but anyway, I was like, I think that girl right there is a fan of mine. And he goes, no. And I like looked it up and I showed him this photo that I knew where it was of, of her in a Bowling for Soup shirt. And he's like, you should DM her. And I'm like, you want me to? And so. Yeah, long story short, she answered me back, and we started a conversation, and um, she came out to a show. We were able to go up and uh, go to Royal Rumble that year. I got to take my whole family and meet That's everybody. Great. You know, we were backstage, and got to, and it, it, it was super cool for me because my sons are were taking pictures with everybody, but then there were wrestlers that wanted to take pictures with me. So, wow. you know, <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, you know, I'm still, you know, I'm still relevant as well, son. Um. But yeah, we're we're buds, you know, and and it to make the world even crazier is, you know, she's getting married um, to Ryan Cabrera, and Ryan Cabrera is from Dallas and used to open up for us all the time when he was a kid. So all right. I've known that guy for twenty five years. Um, so you know, just uh, an absolutely cool story. How was she to work with? Sounds like she was pretty easy to work with. To what now? Sorry, uh, how? Uh, yeah. How was uh, Alexa to uh, work with? Sounds like to she work was with. Oh, the greatest. Yeah. Honestly, um, she couldn't have been any cooler about it. She actually went above and beyond. But, uh, you know, I asked her if she'd want to be in the video. And honestly, I was just going to have her do one cameo in it, you know, or whatever. She was like, no, no, no. I want to come down there and actually. So she, she, got a, she got new gear, which is what they call what they wear. They call it their gear. Um, that's all based upon my Texas guitar and came down and was just so great and so awesome with the kids my son is is uh the one with the glasses in the video all uh, right no 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 no. he's not wearing his glasses you'll be able to tell which one's my guy my son yeah. he looks exactly like me but he was um, happy. <laughs> uh yeah he had a blast but he took it real serious and uh you know it was um it was great she was awesome and uh but yeah then it was a really long day and then ember moon came out actually just to hang out and cool. um she ended up pretty much directing the wrestling scene that happens in that video right. Ember Moon pretty much put all that together because we were kind of just like okay go wrestle you know and they they we they didn't have anything worked out and so ember like basically just did the, i think her name's alicia is that right um uh, i think so something like that i yeah. might have that wrong uh but she went in there and and really just uh, it was awesome so we were uh, we were very lucky. It was it was super super cool. Awesome. Well, Joe, we're down to the uh, final segment of the show, Prime Time Nine. So basically, uh, kind of a personality test. So I'll ask you uh, 
what's your favorite of these topics and uh yeah just give me which one so start off it's always the hardest one a uh, favorite movie pulp fiction um, before i watched diners murder pulp fiction was actually on i just watched the scene where they'd done the dance and then he stabbed her with the adrenaline <laughs> yeah right yeah well, you want me to stab her three times <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, just the ones. Yeah. <laughs> it's up there. I think my favorite Tarantino movie, I do love Hateful Eight, uh, but I think his latest one, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I actually really enjoy that one. I liked it a lot. Um, we actually spoofed that. We have a new song out called I Want to Be Brad Pitt. And we, oh, right. we, uh, we, we not really spoof, we hint at it, so to speak. Yeah. But. Um, I liked that a lot too. To me, that was just, it was a little. It's just a little more artistic. It's a little bit more, you know, kind of got to wait for the punchline at the end, kind of deal. Yes. Whereas Pulp Fiction, it's just messing with your mind the whole time. Yeah, uh, Reservoir Dogs is up there with me too. Um, <laughs> but I just like those kind of movies. Yeah, Tarantino's the best. Yeah. Uh, your favorite song you have recorded. Oh my goodness. Um well, this is the hardest one. Jeez. Um <laughs> favorite song I've recorded. Oh man. Uh I am going to say Friends of Mine. Friends of Mine. Yeah. Yeah, Friends awesome. of Mine. Uh favorite food. <laughs> Breakfast burritos. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, don't really have we don't really have burritos over here that much. No, they're they're a little difficult to get there, but there are a few places here and there that we found, and we've, we've kind of got it figured out. But, yeah, it's uh, – gosh, the breakfast burrito. You guys would love it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, favorite uh, city to play in? Manchester, UK. Oh, awesome. <laughs> mm-hmm. Any specific reason why? <laughs> First place that we just – just an electric audience and just like every single time we would come there, it just, you know, it just was so special. And I, I think it's the first place we sold the biggest place we sold out uh, on our first headlining tour. And uh, just has always had a special place in our heart. I have the B actually tattooed on me somewhere. Yeah. I don't know where it is, but anyway, I have the B tattooed on me. <laughs> cool. Uh, I'm guessing you're a video game player. Favorite video game? I am not a video game player. I um, oh. again, this goes back to earlier when I was saying I I, I uh, so I had COVID recently, right? And uh, I sat down to play. I just decided, okay, I'll play video games. You know, like I'll I'll do this. My my I was in my son's room and he has a PlayStation in there. Uh, I started to play that Red Dead Redemption. You know yes. that game? Yeah. And I'm just such not a video game play. Like, I would play for 30 minutes, and then my character would get killed, and I'd just be like, all right, well, that was fun. And I could move on, whereas I know most people would sit there for another five hours. Yeah. Um, I just – I don't think that that's my thing. But, uh, right. but I, you know, I get it. I, 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 uh, if I, but if I had to pick – oh, no, you know, if I had to pick one, though, I'd pick FIFA. I, I do really like to play FIFA. Um. We all got pretty good at that several years ago because it was something we were doing in the bus. Um, so if there's any video game that I can actually play and do and hold my own, it'd be FIFA. Cool. Uh, favorite uh, sport or slash team? Uh, my favorite team in the world in any sport is the Pittsburgh Steelers, American football. Uh, and we just made the playoffs by some grace of of angels in in heaven. Um, And so I'll be watching that game on Sunday and, and praying as hard as I can. I have to ask Ben because you said you was born and raised Texas. So why Pittsburgh? Well, that's interesting that you would say that you can actually go to my TikTok, Jarrett Reddick on TikTok, and I'll tell you why, but I'll tell you anyway. Uh, My parents are actually from, uh, from Pittsburgh. My dad is from Pittsburgh. And when I was a kid, we were winning the Super Bowl every year. I was born in the seventies. Uh, and, uh, you know, I got presents every year came from Pittsburgh. They were, it's always Steelers stuff. I always liked their colors. Um, you know, you'll, you'll notice a theme in, in Bowling for Soup stuff. We always have something that's black and yellow and it's yeah, always yeah. Been like that. Um, right. and so, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the reason. Cool. Uh, best, uh, fun experience. 
best fan experience. Um, I mean, my goodness, there's so many. I, I've been so blessed with just, you know, things. I, I, you know, as you know, if you're a Bowling for Soup fan, you know how incredibly loyal our fan base is, how just absolutely thoughtful everyone is. It would be very, very hard for me to pick one. Uh, just one, but I'll, 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 I'll just say a great fan experience. How about that? Uh, cause yep. I, I know that I'd forget one, uh, would have to be, um, and I'm not just going for the heartstrings here, but this, uh, you sometimes things happen that are magical. And, uh, we had this guy that worked for a radio station in, um, in Ohio at Toledo, Ohio. And his son was severely autistic, uh, right. but very, very sensitive to sound. But for some reason, Bowling for Soup just connected with this kid. And oh, he wow. would literally, like, come come to life when he heard our songs. And uh, so I got to play some songs for him just on the acoustic guitar. And he had his headphones on. And, uh, and, and you know, it just – it was crazy. All of a sudden, he's kind of looking right at me and – uh, things like that, where you just really get to feel the impact that music has on people, you know, and, and how important music is to, in all of our lives in some way, uh, you know, that's the stuff that you remember, you know, it's just, I, you know, it's not, it's not a story I tell all the time, but that's, that's mine, you know, and I, and that's his too. Yeah. Uh, my youngest is actually, uh, autistic and, um, he's non uh but he loves music so uh and there's specific songs he just keeps listening to and he loves them so i can relate to what you're talking about yeah yeah i I, i'm sure you can it's uh you know we uh we have a few few friends who have autistic kids and it's you know they're all so special you know in whatever way they are nobody's the same obviously just like we're not all the same but uh but yeah it's it's really cool when they latch on to music like that yeah uh cool so yeah so that's it so yeah thanks very much jerry uh but before we do go please have, tell everyone where they can uh, find you on social media absolutely well first of all just go to jarrettreddick.com j-a-r-e-t-r-e-d-d-i-c-k.com but i'm on tiktok jarrett reddick everywhere else i'm j-a-r-e-t-2113 that's facebook twitter and instagram but like I said, you can just go to my website. That'll tell you everything that's going on. My solo country record comes out March 11th. Looks like the new Bowling for Soup record will be out April 24th. Okay. Uh, and we'll have a uh, a new single, I Want to Be Brad Pitt, coming out in late February. Can't wait to hear it. Well, Joe, absolute pleasure to speak to you. And, yeah, whenever you want to do this again, I'll be, I'll be happy to have you. All. Even if you're in the U.K., we'll definitely have to try and do it in person. <laughs> Sounds great, man. Take care. All right, thanks. Have a nice day. All right, James. You too, man. Bye. Bye.